stations throughout the city. You'll see a map shortly. 20 of those are vendor kiosks, kind of what you're used to seeing at the train station or the track station. And this is a new transit option available to Portlanders starting July 19th. It's available 24 7, 365 days a week. This is most of the service area. Couldn't quite fit it on there, but all of the stations are represented here. Uh, you got a pretty wide range, which is fantastic. That density in the central business district here mm -hmm. is very intentional. Uh, Northwest Portland is always ways to be one of the uh, most dense and uh, well-served bike share areas in, in the United States. Uh, we've also got some good connections across the river here into Lloyd District. And then as we move along, we'll start to worrying about infill and expanding the system. But we got 100 stations, you got to figure out where to put them. And we're starting with downtown here. <coughs> Key dates to keep in mind, June 30th to July 15th. This is the, the big one that we've been waiting for. We're actually receiving the bikes right now. Uh, 1,000 bikes is a lot of bikes. <laughs> <laughs> we hit 700, uh, we'll hit 700 by the end of the day today uh, in the warehouse at 6th and Madison, southeast, and it's already feeling full, so find a place to put the other 300 if you guys have got space. <laughs> uh, those installations are gonna be all the dots you saw on the map before throughout the city. We've got 10 a day for roughly 10 days once this goes down. So you just really start to see them pop up all over. Um, 10 to 20 uh, parking stations at each location. So some of them are gonna be pretty, uh, pretty big install, uh, installations. July 8th through the 25th, we're gonna be on NATO, with Better NATO. I know you guys have been supporting that. Thank you very much. Uh, so we'll be activating that stretch for the roughly two and a half weeks there guys about other ideas that you have around partnering on that. So what does that mean when you say you're activating it? We are keeping it active. Um, that happens to be sort of a gap between the blues festival and I think music fest northwest. Mm -hmm. not Brewers Fest. Brewers, Brewers fest. fest. Yeah. That's right. So what we heard from the city of Portland is keep it moving. Got we need something happening. So there will be activities. So there's, yeah. Stuff. Yep. Okay. Yep. We got some fun ideas, but we're also going to be riding the bikes. It's kind of a good time for us to be just getting them out there, normalizing bike share, letting people see it actually working, mm -hmm. even if it's just our team riding bikes around. Um, we just want it to be in front of everybody. Mm -hmm. July nineteenth, bike share launch release, and then it's a. Uh, it's free for all. <laughs> so hopefully we'll have a number of you on board for the July 19th launch and you can uh, try it out and let us know what you think. We want to work with businesses. We know it's a big part of your mission is to keep people coming to Portland, keep the businesses happy, the hotels full, restaurants full. Uh, we're going to help them get there. So currently we're working on uh, finalizing the contracts for a group of the memberships. We'll be talking to businesses about that, how to activate their employees here. Um, we're gonna be using a lot of those businesses, um, ones that I've developed relationships with, ones that I hope that you guys can help me make contracts with if I don't already have them, to, to show them in a great light. Um, this is Portland's bike share system. We want people to use it to run errands, have lunch, uh, go on dates, and they're gonna have uh, they gotta have a place to go. So let's show them the best that Portland has to have. And in that, we'll be building goodwill and trust with those businesses for a nice long life for the bike share. Maybe we'll list a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> bike town for visitors. Uh, City of Portland and Motivate, the company that I work for, with Bike Town. Our top priority is the best first experience that people can have. You guys all know, first impressions are everything. 
Um, my ambassador team is going to be on the ground making sure that the people at the stations, visitors especially, are uh, know what to do when they get there, how to have the best possible first experience. Um, I've spoken a little bit about the density in the Central Business District and the Lloyd District um, to serve those needs. We want people to see Portland like a Portlander, just sort of using that language a little bit as we go forward with social media campaigns and figure out where we can tie in. Getting people between their lodging, between conferences and other parts of the city, extending the range of visitors. They can see a little more of the city than they may have normally. It's not just that train ride between the convention hotel and the convention center. And working on conventions or please promo codes. Um, <clears throat> like to hear from you guys on what you could use from us uh, specifically in that area. A little bit of a kind of blow up here so you can see convention center area, Lloyd District, and then the greater downtown area. I'm assuming this is sort of where a number of people are staying and traveling back and forth to conferences and conventions and things like that. These little kind of Wi-Fi stations are the some of the 20 kiosks where people can buy a card and a membership uh, for the day use or the single use passes, I guess what is on the cards, or just the membership for those. Single use is a 30 minute trip, it's 250, same as a TriMet ticket. Uh, so it's a 30 minutes will get you pretty much from one corner of the system to the other most of the time. Day use is three hours of use in a 24 hour period, uh, and that's $12. So $12 a month uh, billed annually is a pretty good deal if you live in Portland. You figure you're gonna buy a day pass once in a while. If you do that once a month, you might as well just have a year of membership. With an annual membership, you get 90 minutes of ride time every day. Um, yeah, so do a little bit of research into this. And what can we do to make Bike Tail work best for you and your events? Um, definitely open to any ideas and love to chat with folks after the staff meeting if that's something you would like to do. But I'm also here to take questions off the top. Yes. So, Tom, how does the um, 90 minutes work? If, is it cumulative or is it like you got 90 minutes a day? Or how does that work? Yeah, 90 minutes a day. So, it restarts every day. Okay. And uh, on the back of the bike, and I have the bike out front. I really don't need to bring it inside. So <laughs> just come down, like, I'll show it to you. There's a little computer on the back and it tracks your time and distance. So, as long as that's, that's running, it's a, just kind of think of it like a taxi. You know, it's just running your time down. Typical trip, 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, it's not meant to be kept out all day. It's something to use to run to a meeting at the other end of town. Uh, grab lunch with coworkers, run errands, those kinds of things. It's really intended to be short trips. So the idea is that you're getting you know, four, five, six of those kind of 15 minute trips in a day if you need them. So does your computer continue to run, like let's say you take it to Freddy's and then you do shopping, you come out front? So good question, yeah. When you, the, I forgot to talk about smart bikes. <laughs> bikes are smart. So they have a lock in them actually. When you enter your code and your PIN, or if you swipe your RFID card that you'll get and your PIN, you release the bike and that starts the time running. When you get to your destination, you lock up the bike and the time stops. Now, if you are leaving the service area to visit like the zipper for lunch, uh, just outside of the service area, but you really want to go to Basilisk because of that chicken sandwich, no problem, I did it. <laughs> you can go out, lock up, push the hold button, that'll hold it for up to 30 minutes. It's definitely enough time to get your sandwich, I know. <laughs> Come back out, unlock the bike. The bike has been kept off the map so no one else can so no one else can find it exactly, and they can't swipe their card and enter a pin to take it either because it's been, hold, been held. So you get thirty minutes. Now you're 
clock is still running at that time, but you've ensured that you get that bite when you come back out. Uh, grocery store, things like that. Most of the time, there's gonna be a bike station, pretty good density here, there's gonna be a bike station near you, and you can just lock it up. Time stops. So, there's gonna be some nuance around pricing and timing and how everything works, for sure. It'll be a little bit of a learning curve. But, yeah. Did that answer your question? Yeah. You mentioned um, an, a team of ambassadors. Can you talk a little bit more about like of course. how many, for how long, and where those people will be? Yes, uh, currently hiring, finishing the hiring of 15 brand ambassadors. Um, they will be mostly at community events like the Sunday Parkways, um, Good and Hood, Good in the Hood this weekend, uh, movies in the park, concerts in the park, and when they're not doing those events, they're going to be on the street visiting these bike town stations and making sure people are having a good experience. Probably four or five on on the street per day for about four to six hour shifts. And we'll see where we need to kind of staff up, but I move to That's okay. Probably please for coming to town. What what's the process for me getting registered so I can jump on the bike and get down there? Great question. Okay. Uh, you can sign up for Bike Town online. So you can do it even before you arrive. You can do it via the app, which will be on the little kiosk billboards. Um, that's going to be the best way to go because then you've got the map with you and it'll tell you where you are in relation to the closest bike town station. Um, do you need a credit card? Do you need an ID? You do need a credit card. You don't need an ID. What kinds of projections do you have for theft and damage and all that kind of stuff? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, what's the experience I'm looking for? Projections or protections? Projections. Mm -hmm. Projections. Well, I mean, what do you, you must have built something like that into your calculation. Yeah, I think that's on the operations folks have got that figured out a little bit better mm -hmm. than I do. Um, well, protections are good with it. What, what, right, you know? for protections, <laughs> yeah. I, I can speak to that a little better. Um, because they have the lock built in, mm -hmm. it's a little more secure. It's like basically a key lock that goes through the wheel and uh, through the unit in the back. That locks the wheel, but it also locks it to wherever you've locked it, the bike rack or whatever it is. In other bike share systems, the problems with theft have been that um, there's a little nose, effectively, that kind of docks the bike into the station. And people found that if they you know, hit it just right, they could release the bike because mm -hmm. that little it's just a little pinch point. There's mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. holding it in there, you know? So they had bigger problems with that. The problem we're going to have is around people forgetting to lock up mm -hmm. the bike. Um, or just not returning it. Yeah. Or potentially just not returning it. That said, unlike some of the other bike systems, this one has all the lifts in the back. So it's also powered by a solar panel and uh, Dynamo, a hub up front that helps recharge it. So the low jack in the bike will let us know where it is. And when the bike leaves the system, it says, it's smart, right? I don't want to get And it's literally like sending us SOS right. kind of beacons. So we can recover the bikes pretty easily. Um, you're working with the local police department to make sure that's taken care of. Now, if you were the one that forgot to lock the bike up, you're responsible for it. So you had a credit card, $1,200 goes to you, you're out the gate. Uh, I'm sure we'll be fielding some of those calls as well that were mistakes. Uh, but again, you have a bit of a learning curve, and we're aware of that. Back to the, the visitor yes. experience. You said the best thing was for them to go online beforehand or to download the app. Or I'm only visiting for a week. I don't want an annual membership, and maybe I don't want the app. So, is is it just this day use? You would just walk up to the kiosk and yep. spend. Yeah, that would be the or? third way is to go to the kiosk directly. Okay. Two fifty for a single use trip if you just wanted to try it out. Okay. Um, if you thought we've been talking to Cycle Portland, uh, 
uh, bike tours and pedal bike tours. Uh, Evan over at Cycle Portland said, well, maybe I'll just have a new standing bike town bike tour. So it's an hour and a half, roughly. Gives you kind of a quick look around town. You still have an hour and a half left on your ticket for the day. So we're hoping that it, instead of uh, walking on their business, we're hoping that we can expand their fleet a little bit and give them something that they can use. Uh, yes. But that's, those are the ways that you would do it. So how smart is your smart bike? Um, when it uh, goes outside of the system, um, it's not like a grocery cart where the wheels go. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I get that question a lot, actually. The bike will not stop you in your tracks, uh, thankfully. It's just, what will happen is, you know, if you go to the zipper and you lock it up and finish that trip there, um, it's going to say, hey, come and get me. It's going to tell us, and we have a rebalancing staff that has a couple vans, and they'll go around and pick up things like that, or a damaged bike. Um, there's a twenty dollars so if you end your trip and leave it there. There's a twenty dollars fee for leaving it outside of the service area. That's about it, but it, it does tell us if it wants to come home. So bikes always want to come home. Yeah, is there a reciprocal program with bike share um, program from other cities? We do. So the bikes that we have are called um, Social Bike, they're built by Social Bicycles, SOBI. And they have systems in uh, like smaller municipalities around the US, including like Atlanta, Santa Monica, a number of others. <clears throat> when you have a Bike Town membership, you're effectively buying into the Smart Grid network as well. And then you add subscriptions to your membership. So I have a Bike Town membership uh, and a subscription with Bike Town. But if I'm going to Atlanta for work or Santa Monica or one of the other cities, I can add their pricing structure to it, still use my Bike Town card to access the bike and my PIN, and then it knows, okay, you're in Santa Monica, you can use these bikes, you're gonna get charged $13 instead of $12 for plugging in pricing structures. So you subscribe and then it links Cool. Yes. I have two questions. Is there like an age limit? Yes, there is an age limit. Currently, that is 18 and older. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a number of requests for that to be brought down to 16, uh, and I think that they're considering that. Because they're all the same size bikes, right? All the same size bikes. And then, do you, what about people that want helmets? Helmets. It's another good question. So, no helmet law in the state of Oregon, okay. so we're not providing helmets at the stations, uh, and there are a number of other reasons that that gets really tricky. Um, it's also the reason that they're considering being able to allow 16 and older because helmet law starts uh, under 16. So um, we're working with, talking to Nutcase Helmets right now about uh, what kind of discount for membership. Uh, another thing I talked to the bike tour companies about is they rent helmets as part of their service and that's what I'm telling my brand ambassadors right now is use your phone you can suggest either of these two places to rent a helmet for the day I think it's like five dollars mm -hmm. or you can send them to uh, the closest bike shop bike gallery or whatever it is they can purchase a helmet uh, we're going to be kind of developing that a little more as we go but trying to find low cost solutions for residents We'll be doing a little campaign with Nutcase, actually, it's something around the lines of uh, have a helmet for work, have a helmet for home, and just keep it hanging up. You know, go into a Kinko's or something, it would be cool on the hang there. Maybe something a little more conservative. <laughs> Get into your business meeting. Um, but that kind of idea that you have it where you need it. So kind of building on that safety, I know that the city of Portland has like Vision Zero, the concern about, I mean, this is great for, I think, from our biking status, but are they concerned about the risk if something happens to someone not having helmets? The liability of that? The track record for bike share in the United States says no. There's not been a fatality on bike share in the United States okay. to date. Um, 
there are very few crashes and any crashes that the reported crashes are all relatively minimal. Our biggest concern is actually the box tracks. Mm -hmm. So inside the basket along yeah. with, uh, so just on the, before I jump on that, the helmet question, we're modeling helmet use in all of our social media, all of our presence in the world. Uh, and we're uh, requesting people wear helmets, suggesting that that be something that people do. Um, but we're not requiring it. <clears throat> so inside the basket on the bike, it says, you know, wear a helmet, signal, go right on the sidewalk, like right where you can see it the whole time, and avoid max or avoid train tracks. Um, but that's, that's a, a big question. Thank you. Thanks for coming over here. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned, um, I think you said that sort of the corporate or group membership program is still in development. Do you have any, I mean, is that going to happen? Is that something that Travel Portland is going to buy for us? Brian. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> It would be ridiculous not to. I know, right? <laughs> that was the expensive, though. Like, there's no helmet. <laughs> Travel in Portland I branded helmet. I can talk to that case. Yeah. We, we <laughs> spray our own helmets. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like everyone's willing to accommodate that. <laughs> but so that um, is in yeah. development. It is in development. And it, it'll be ready by July 19th. Okay, cool. Um, as well as the low income options that we're working oh, on the community cycling center. They got a grant to help buy down memberships to very, very, very low cost memberships for folks that need it. Um, there are currently three tiers that we're sending around and I'll be happy to send those tiers over to you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> From kind of it splitting it half and half to uh, buying it all in mm -hmm. to uh, what's the other one? Oh, kind of just a nominal fee that allows employees to have a sort of a one dollar off annual membership. So instead of a twelve dollar, that sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard what the cheapest one is. Yeah. Um, so really, what we're finalizing is more of the uh, contract. Yeah, thing yeah, and stuff like that. But awesome. Those tiers are pretty well established. So I'm still interested in like Crypto Fred Meyer. <laughs> one stop so, shopping. It's a, it's a regular one. So, so I'm in there. And it yep. takes me longer than 30 minutes because, you know, hey, everything's on sale, right? right? It's one stop shopping. So um, when I come out, I could re swipe my card, right? Because time's up. But is there any chance that someone has stolen my bike in the meantime? You know, they, they've said, whoa, it's back on the grid. I'm taking this bike. There is a chance, yeah. yeah. After 30 minutes, it goes back on the map. Yeah. So you should go to a Fred yeah. Meyer that's close to a kiosk. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just be efficient. Yeah. Or go to Susan's. Don't, don't buy so much. Yeah, don't buy so much. You only commit so much. I'm just going to say, yeah. 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 I mean, the best yeah. the yeah. best case scenario is going to be to go station to station uh -huh. as far as uh, time and money. Uh, but if you do need to run in and grab something, the nice thing about these bikes, unlike the bikes uh, in New York or these other places where you have to find a stocking thing to, mm -hmm. and then go to street is that you can take it to Fred Meyer and lock it to the rack outside go in you hold it go in and do your quick little shopping and come back out so it gives a little more range and a little more convenience of use uh, yeah. than some of the other systems that we use. on average how many bikes are at a hub or at a station we'll be seeing them uh, stations 10 to 20 okay. bikes and then we have a rebalancing staff that goes around and makes sure that the stations that have a high use of drop off are having those bikes pulled and taken back to the high use of starting up the stations. So, and it'll be event specific and things like that. But when we know about those, we'll be sending people over. So if there's a big convention on, let's say, 200 people from downtown to ride over to the convention center. Uh -huh. Best yeah. case scenario here. Yeah. Um, and then that like station did. is full. They could just lock their bike up next to it or anywhere around that area. They'll be charged half an hour, but then the bike will be released. Right. The well, they won't be charged a half an hour. Uh, they can lock up in the uh, proximity mm -hmm. of the station. 
you can go. Uh, let's see, how's that gonna work? Come over. Station's full. You lock up nearby, and there's this kind of a little bubble will draw around the stations to include a couple of the racks nearby. Those will be a, a no charge. Just finish your trip. The ones kind of around the backside where there isn't a station are going to be a two dollar fee. So they go back up on the back. So it's two dollars to go block it away from a station. Somebody comes out and says, "Okay, I'm going to go back downtown to take." They'll be given a dollar credit for returning the bike to a station. <laughs> so the way I'm saying it is door to door for two dollars more. So instead of going station to station, you would go station to location. Okay. Two dollar charge. You come out. Somebody else comes out. If they return that bike, they get a dollar credit. Okay. Yes. So we would need to go to like one of the specific twenty kiosks to get the initial card. Is that right? Or you can do it at any of the stations. Uh, it has to be a kiosk station. Will there be signage at the other stations about like here's the nearest kiosk? Sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So every station has a uh, map panel. Mm -hmm. With branding, of course, uh, and so the map will tell you where all where you are in location in relation to all of the other stations and kiosks, so you can find it quickly. And again, if you have the app, you can find it by um, by kiosk. But you need the physical card to be able to swipe it in the bike. Actually, the you app. do not need the physical card. So you can actually come to Portland uh, on that trip have signed up, you get a six digit account number, that's your SOBI account number, again, you can use it in different cities, and you're, you set your four digit pin. So you can actually, and this is what I've been doing, because we don't actually have the cards yet. <laughs> uh, you type in the six digit code on the keypad on the back of the bike, it says, oh, okay, hey Tom, type in your pin, one, two, three, four, just not my pin. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the bike is released to you. So you actually never even need a card. A visitor doesn't need to go to a kiosk, acquire a card. It's not that onerous. Um, you can literally just do it online. But, but again, if a visitor doesn't want to join before they get there, they don't want to do that, they just want to use it when they're here, they do have to go to a kiosk and get a physical card this way? Yes, if they don't want to join before they get here, if they don't want to have an app, if they don't want to do anything digital, they just need a credit card and a kiosk. And so to that point, they don't want to do anything digital. Will you be having a printed map? There is not a printed map. Right, so they have to have the app if they want to navigate around the city. Or, yeah, or they could take a picture, I suppose, if they have a cell phone that would take a picture of the map at the station. Yeah, but it's built around, it is built around the app. Uh, um, our brand ambassadors are going to have the little folding maps, Portland maps, bike maps, to hand out. So uh, it's kind of a stopgap, but at this point, we're trying to stay away from paper as much as possible. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming here, Sean. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. We will continue to badge you with questions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>